The Confederacy of Independent Systems battle droids perhaps form the most overlooked army in Star Wars. It probably doesn't help that the Clankers are typically portrayed as unintelligent cannon fodder, but that's beside the point. The CIS still created the largest droid army the galaxy had ever seen, one which in fact outnumbered the clone troopers 10 to 1. There were said to be quintillions of droids manufactured between the Trade Federation, Techno Union, and the other corporations. Continuing our Star Wars Army variant series, today we bring you every single Separatist battle droid type and variant explained. Before we begin, we'll preface by saying that we'll only include infantry units. The majority of the CIS starfighters, turrets, tanks, and other artillery were also autonomous robots, but if we included them, this video would probably be twice as long. Perhaps we'll go over them in a future episode. We begin with the B-1 series battle droids. These were by far the most common unit. Even though they were extensively produced and deployed, the B-1 was flimsy and easy to destroy, and was only truly dangerous in substantial, overwhelming numbers. It's a good thing they were cheap and quick to build. Early versions required a control ship to receive commands, and even later units had minimal independent thought. Throughout the droid's history, it was evident that the B-1 was dim-witted. Programming glitches were frequent as the droids developed personality quirks and were often known to make commentary on their surroundings. Several sub-variants of the B-1 existed with their own unique paint jobs, including B-1 rocket droids specifically modified to hunt down escape pods in space, they donned rocket packs and were distinguished by their orange and black colored bodies, B-1 grapple droids that specialized in hand-to-hand -hand combat and had white and green plating, firefighter battle droids tasked to suppress and extinguish fires in capital ship hangars, their bodies were mostly black with yellow stripes and a single red dot on their heads, heavy battle droids, rocket battle droids, recon droids, and repeater blaster droids also operated their designated weapons. There were also units like security droids, pilots, commanders, and tank drivers with their own color schemes. E-4 Baron droids were a step up from the B-1. These all-purpose security units were hulking droids capable of impressive feats of strength. They were equipped with two dual-repeating blaster cannons mounted on their arms and could track an opponent with motion, heat, energy, and sonic detectors. However, E-4s were very slow moving and had no form of shield. The B-2 series super battle droid was far tougher than a B-1, with thicker armor and the strength to lift a clone trooper off the ground. However, B-2s were designed with simple processors, limiting their ability to formulate strategies. Standard B-2s were equipped with wrist rockets on one or both of their forearms. Variations of the B-2 include the B-2 grapple droid, designed for close-range combat, the B-2HA super battle droid equipped with a cannon arm that could fire homing rockets, the B-2RP rocket droid designed with flight capabilities, the B-2 super rocket trooper, an upgraded variant of the previous rocket droid, the B-2ACM that featured a more powerful blaster, and the experimental Cortosis B-2 made from the rare metal Cortosis that made them resistant to blaster bolts and lightsabers. B-3 Ultra Battle Droids were a lesser known successor to the B-2 and are far taller. Their weapon systems were much more deadly, though they never made it to mass production. BX Series Commando Droids were an advanced unit designed for infiltration and action behind enemy lines. They were also used to perform security, bodyguard, and enforcer duties for certain high-ranking separatists. Ruthless, lethal, and adaptive, these droids were the bane of Republic clone troopers and in multiple squads could change the tide of a battle. They were able to put even a Jedi on their back foot and were a match for some of the most skilled clones, often wielding shields and vibroblades. However, their hefty price tag prevented them from being mass-produced. Droidicas, also known as destroyer droids, were dangerous and deadly, designed to exterminate their adversaries. They could transform their shape by curling into a ball and moving up to 75 kilometers per hour, or stand on three legs and utilize a shield generator while firing at a target. The Droidica Mark II was an upgraded variant of the Droidica, capable of switching between blaster cannons and ion cannons, which allowed them to combat infantry or vehicles. But the droids were deployed too late into the war to play a significant role. An Ultra Droidica was a larger variant of a Droidica. It had considerably more powerful weapons, but required a tremendous amount of energy to sustain its shields. As a result, it often operated in the shieldless mode, 
when there were other droids around to protect it. The Droidica Sharpshooter was a variation of Droidica that specialized in sniping. Unlike the original Droidica, it was equipped with a single blaster rifle in the middle and used its armored shell to cover its front while in combat instead of deflector shields. They were however vulnerable to attacks from either side. The D1 series aerial battle droids had wings that they used to pursue enemies to areas where normal battle droids could not. They were developed by the Techno Union, who deployed them out of their facility on Skako Minor. The DS D1 dwarf spider droid was armed with a powerful nose mounted laser cannon capable of both rapid fire and high intensity burst. The four legs of the droid were designed and manufactured to allow attachment and movement on vertical terrain, such as cliffs. The ADSD Advanced Dwarf Spider Droid was a more heavily armed and armored version of the Dwarf Spider Droid, capable of operating in complete darkness. The Heavy Dwarf Spider Droid was the successor to the original Dwarf Spider Droid, though little specifics are known about this unit. The LM-432 Crab Droid varied in size, smaller models had four legs, and larger models boasted six. Its armored limbs provided secure purchase when clambering over uneven terrain, and teeth at the lips of the limbs, combined with gripping prongs at the joints, allowed the crab droid to scale steep inclines. The crab droid had two belly-mounted laser cannons for long-range threats. The LR-57 retail droid was used for very particular situations. The droid was able to lay dormant in shallow ground, in weight of enemies traversing above, using the exposed antennas to detect disturbances. When set in a dense arrangement, tripping a single dormant droid would cause all others within a short proximity to also activate. AQ series aqua droids were an amphibious model commonly used to lay siege to aquatic planets such as Kamino and Moncala. They were excellent swimmers and possessed a retractable laser cannon on their right wrist and feet that could switch into propellers. IG-100 Magna Guards were fearsome bodyguard droids and a favorite of General Grievous, though they were also known to accompany other high-ranking Separatist personnel, including Count Dooku. Magna Guards were equipped with Electrostaffs that could be used against Jedi lightsabers, and were capable of continuing a fight even with the loss of one or multiple limbs, or even their heads. They were worthy competitors even to the most skilled of Jedi. The IG-110 lightsaber droid was created by the Separatists to deal with the growing involvement of the Jedi during the Clone Wars. They were based heavily on the design of Magna Guards and proved effective in dealing with lightsaber-wielding Jedi. Their programming was created from thousands of hours of hollow recordings of Jedi in combat. The IG-110 would wield two lightsabers, which used synthetic lightsaber crystals. The IG-86 Sentinel droid was a model of assassin droid similar to others like IG-86 and IG-11. They saw frequent use during the Clone Wars, during which they were used by both third parties and the CIS. IG Lancers were armed with giant energy lances and anti-vehicle mines riding into battle on swoop bikes. IG Lancer droids were led by Dirge at the Battle of Moonalist. Tactical droids were a type of battle droid designed to plan battle strategies, serving as commanding officers in the droid army. They were often positioned on droid control ships of Separatist fleets and command centers on planets where they could manage squads of battle droids. The Super Tactical Droid was an advanced model of the Tactical Droid that was utilized as an enhanced version with higher strategic processing and intelligence, while also equipped with better tactical analysis in predicting a response to organic commanders. Super Tactical Droids often filled the role of a commander or general. Buzz droids were used for the purpose of disabling enemy starships. They operated quickly, using a multitude of destructive tools, such as drilling cutters, buzz saws, and other sharp, ship-destroying equipment. While their tools were effective, the central eye was a weak spot, which could take the buzz droid out of commission when hit. The HKB-3 Hunter Killer droid had square heads and were equipped with rapid-fire blasters. They relied on a central control computer to coordinate their operation, and were mainly used prior to the invasion of Naboo. Though a rarer sight than the B-1 battle droid by the time of the Clone Wars, HKB-3 droids could still be seen, relegated to simple guard duties or patrolling remote planets. The HK-77 assassin droid was considered the pinnacle of the HK series assassin droid lines that were designed by the Separatists, considered to be extremely aggressive. However, they were produced too late into the war and didn't see usage until the Galactic Civil War under the command of HK-47. The A-Series Assassin Droid was one of the more advanced and elite models of combat automation used by the Separatists, 
typically fought in sizable teams, overpowering their targets with firepower and combat skill rather than stealth. They seem to have been used sparingly, sent against groups of Jedi at the direct command of the most senior Separatist commanders. Assassin probes resembled large spiders and were designed to assassinate targets with high efficiency. If cornered or destroyed, they could release many smaller mini-assassin droids from pores on their heads to finish the job. Separatist probe droids were used for reconnaissance and later were adapted and used by the Galactic Empire. Sabotage droids were repulsor lift droids equipped with electrical prods and bladed rotors. They were also equipped with stealth field generators. Infiltrator demolition droids were a model of transforming droids that could disguise themselves as common sweeper droids, which were recognized by Republic officers. Once the droids infiltrated their target, they would transform into another mode, which was heavily armed. The final of the droids' modes was when two of the droids would combine into a bomb to destroy their intended target. The Colacoid Infiltrator series droid was an assassin droid model that had four multi-jointed legs and long, sharp, curved hooks at the ends of its arms. One of the infiltrator's primary tasks was to land on the hull of a ship, then drill its way in and use an atmosphere generator to patch the hole behind it before its intended victims could be alerted to its presence. Using a holographically projected disguise field, the droid could then sneak around a ship and quietly assassinate every crew member or passenger one by one. The chameleon droid was a mine-laying sabotage droid outfitted with laser cannons, military-grade mines, and a holographic array. They were originally mining exploration droids known as spelunker probe droids. The Mega Droid was a super weapon whose factory was destroyed by Anakin Skywalker and Yoda before they saw heavy deployments. Morp Droids were a series of smaller Seeker Droids that were developed by Asajj Ventress. What made these droids dangerous was the powerful electrical charges they could unleash on living flesh. The Decimator was a similar droid that used energy tentacles to search for organic matter. When one tentacle located organic matter, the others closed in and vaporized it. The C-8 Saboteur droid was an advanced spy droid used to sabotage enemy positions. They utilized strike and fade combat protocols as part of their programming that dictated their tactics. The plans for an advanced battle droid were stolen from a Techno Union base by Padawan Ahsoka Tano. The stealth droid was a four-armed battle droid that was armed with a type of portable cloaking device. General Grievous used a squad of stealth droids for an attack on Bandamir. The BL series Battle Legionnaires were a limited 1,000 unit only run produced for the Mandalorian protectors. They were powerful and lethal in combat. The war droids bolstered the protectors' numbers and acted as frontline troops during battle. The CWW-8 battle droid was a modified version of a load lifter droid with its lift replaced by blasters. They also served HK-47 by the Galactic Civil War. The grenadier droid was armed with dual grenade launchers. They were capable of launching a steady barrage of bombs at enemy personnel. Our two final droids, an aerial unit called the Mosquito droid and the MR-200 minesweeper droid, were only mentioned in novels and therefore do not have any form of image that we could find. But which of the Separatist battle droid variants is your favorite, and which army should we cover next? Let us know in the comments below. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.